guys welcome back to all in and law this is a medical video lecture orthopedics and today we're going to talk about a very important topic for USMLE or for any other medical board examination that's posterior this location of hip posterior dislocation of the hip and this posterior dislocation of the hip is really very important for USMLE for step 2 CK for step 3 okay so remember try to concentrate on this and there are so many tricks the USMLE will play with you guys so try to concentrate on this so remember, you know the what you call the hip joint is like what you call the ball and so socket joint. Ball and a socket type of joint. Okay. So if this is the acetabulum of a hip. And this is the femur okay and if there is what you call this dislocation is really very common because it's not fully covered the, this what you call the circle is not fully covered this the what you call the ball of the the head of the femur is not fully covered by the acetabulum so chances of this moving out is very high okay guys so let's talk about this but compared to what you call shoulder joint, shoulder joint is more prone for dislocation than hip joint. Okay guys. So let's talk about this. Okay, let it be here only. Okay. Remember what's the posterior dislocation of the hip is the head of the femur. You can see over here is pushed out of the acetabulum posteriorly. Means the what you call the acid the the, uh, the head of the femur moves backwards right and in 50 percent of what you call patients this is associated with a chip fracture chip fracture okay of the posterior lip of the acetabulum means the acetabulum if this is a posterior it's gonna there's a fracture of this segment okay can be there okay as the head moves out it pushes the what you call the part of the acetabulum and causes the fracture that's known as chip fracture okay uh, so what's the mechanism of uh, injury how does it this posterior dislocation of hip occurs remember the injury is sustained by violence what you call violent directed against the shaft of the femur with when the hip is flexed you have to flex the hip okay and give a big blow to your joint to the knees okay then what happens the hip joint the, the the head of the femur will move posteriorly and causes the dislocation and results in the posterior dislocation of the hip so now you tell me what type of injury or what type of what you call uh, injury do you do you expect to cause this what you call uh, posterior dislocation of hip it's a dashboard injury so dashboard injury for example let me draw over if this is a car this is a seat okay uh, this is what you call steering okay and these are the wheels okay this is a dash and you here you have dashboard right okay look at this this hip is flexed okay and these are the knees right or right two legs so when there is a, a what you call the injury okay when there is an injury when there is a road what you call uh, the motor vehicle accidents or okay the car accidents so what happens there is a sudden what you call the trauma there is a push to this dashboard and this dashboard goes and what you call uh, pushes the this knee joint and causes the dislocation of the hip the what you call the femur moves backwards over here okay and that results in what you call the posterior dislocation of the hip but remember posterior dislocation of the hip the hip should be flexed in this condition okay 
the what you call the what you call the one who is driving in the car is thrown forwards and his knees strikes against the dashboard and the force is transmitted up the shaft resulting in the posterior dislocation of the hip right that's known as also known as a dashboard injury so very important try to concentrate on this guys okay so in usml examination if they give the patient was driving the car or was in the front seat okay or any dashboard injury then think of posterior dislocation of the hip let's talk how what are the clinical features clinical features okay and remember this posterior dislocation of the hip is really very easy to diagnose patient usually presents with severe trauma severe trauma okay and then he will have severe pain then swelling and deformity what kind of deformity do you see in these patients of posterior dislocation of the hip is it's a flexion adduction and internal rotation okay flexion adduction and internal rotations so because of this what happens the leg becomes short compared to the other side of the leg right so and some patients can feel what you call a head of the femur in the gluteal region okay and sometimes what happens if the patient has a severe trauma severe accident major accidents okay uh, what happens when uh, this what you call posterior dislocation of the hip is usually what you call uh, is uh, missed during what you call examination okay so it's a really very important to take an x-ray okay and you should look for what you call the fracture of uh, posterior dislocation of the hip very important in severe trauma okay what happens if you don't take the x-ray and if you miss the what you call posterior dislocation of the hip in a severe trauma where there's a multiple injuries okay so there is a one important complication that is avascular necrosis okay avascular necrosis is really very dangerous that's why you have to be very cautious and treat this condition okay so you should never ever miss that now let's talk about the radiological features The femoral head is out of the acetabulum, you know very well, this is the acetabulum and this is the head of the femur. Okay, right? Acetabulum, head of the femur, okay? The thigh is internally rotated so that the lesser trochantic becomes less prominent compared to that on the opposite side okay there is a broken shenton's line shenton's line what's a shenton's line it's nothing but it's a line it's a semicircular line it, it, what you call it starts from what you call inferior border of the superior pubic ramus along the what you call uh, inferior medial border of the neck of the femur so if you draw like this it will come okay right Shenton's line I'm not able to draw it correctly you okay, guys so just remember you can just Google the images you can see clearly and if there's a breakage of this line then you can call it as what you call the broken Shenton's line okay what are the causes for the broken Shenton's line one is um, DDS developmental dysplasia of hip and second one is what the fracture of the neck of the femur okay Shenton's line DDH indicates broken Shenton's line indicates DDH developmental dysplasia of hip then we have fracture of neck of femur okay right guys so and even if you take the x-ray try to look for what you call uh, um what you call the um chip fracture okay at around the acetabulum right so let's talk about the treatment
In emergency, emergency case, what it calls in emergency, reduction of the dislocation is really very important. This is reduction is really very important. Okay. What happens if the head of the femur is remained outside for a longer period than it goes into a very critical condition known as avascular necrosis? Okay, avascular necrosis. So it is possible to reduce the hip by manipulation under what you call general anesthesia in the most of the cases. And the chip fracture of acetabulum usually falls in the place as the head comes to its position, right? You can do what you call open reduction, okay? Maybe required in cases where if you want to do open reduction, then what you call, if you have what you call conditions like closed reduction has failed, closed reduction if failed, okay, then you have to do what you call open reduction or what you call, um, <coughs> sorry, if there is an uh, intra-articular bone fragments not allowing concentric reduction okay or uh, if the acetabular fragment is large and is from the weight bearing part of the acetabulum then you can do open reduction okay guys uh, what are the techniques of closing this close uh, technique of what you are doing close reduction is the patient is anesthetized okay let me draw over here I don't know okay guys so you have to flex the hip like this okay and doctor being over here he has to hold this okay and assistant can grasp the pelvis firmly okay you have to grasp over here hold the pelvis what you call uh, firmly and the doctor flexes the hip and knee at the right angle as shown in the diagram you can see over here and exerts what you call an axial pull and usually you hear what you call the sound of reduction after which it becomes possible to move the hip in all directions freely okay as we see in a pull uh, uh, okay pulled elbow right so the leg is kept in the what you call light traction with the what you call hip abducted okay for three to six weeks Okay, after that you can start slowly the exercises. Okay guys, so this is what the technique we do. Now let's talk about the what are the complications. Let's talk about the complications. Okay, what we know is injury to sciatic nerve. Okay, injury to the sciatic nerve. What happens, the sciatic nerve lies posterior to what you call acetabulum. Okay guys, so it lies posterior to the acetabulum. So chances of fracture of this is really very common, okay? And it is it is really very common when there is a fracture, when there is a posterior dislocation of the hip, okay? Um, um, right guys, so what is the treatment for this? Uh, for this, you can, what you call, uh, you have to do what you call uh, open reduction for that, okay? And just you can uh, decompress it, okay? Uh, and that will help you for this sciatic nerve injury. Okay, guys, and next important is the avascular necrosis of head of femoral head. Okay, avascular necrosis of the femoral head. Remember, in 15 to 20 percent of cases, you see this. Okay, and that's why it's really very important to treat that posterior hip dislocation. Okay, uh, what happens is that the, when femoral head undergoes avascular necrosis, okay. Although the blood supply is cut off at the time of dislocation, the changes of avascular necrosis to appear on an x-ray is going to take, tell me, it's going to take one to two years. One to two years. Remember, it's not within weeks, it's not within months, it's going to be years, okay? One to two years. So try to remember, remember this because in your assembly, they will give you history of trauma and they will try to trick you 
that the patient complains of a hip pain again. So what might it be cause within three months? Okay, so it's not a vascular necrosis. Then think of other causes also. Okay, right, guys. Okay, right. So what happens because of this vascular necrosis? The patients are at risk of developing osteoarthritis early. Okay. So one of the late complexion though, okay, but it can occur, okay. And what you have to do is for this is what you call, uh, uh, if what the treatment is usually conservative, you can try this, okay. In some cases, you can do what you call operation is needed for that, for osteoarthritis or total hip replacement can be done. And other complication is myositis ossificans. This occurs a few weeks to what you call months after the injury and the patient complains of persistent pain and the stiffness of the hip, okay? And if you take an x-ray, it shows a mass of fluffy new bone around the hip, okay? And what you have to do, treat is treat, treat with a rest and analgesic, that's it guys. Okay guys, so thank you so much for watching this video. I'm sure you got an idea about the posterior dislocation of the hip. The two important points, one is the dashboard injury and second one is the avascular necrosis of the hip for USMLE. Thank you so much for watching this video. Take care.